Hello, my New Year post or my post in the last days of year 2020 is about my recent travel and the historic and tragic story that befell one royal family in Europe. I decided to end the year with this story because no matter how tragic it seems, there's always a rainbow or there's always hope that things will get better, that history will overcome, that humanity will overcome. I know the quarantine and the COVID pandemic has really changed our lives. It, it uh, somehow felt that there's no hope that things may not return to normal. But as long as humanity keeps on living, keeps on fighting, and keeps on doing things the best it could, people and human being will always triumph in the end. Technology, science, and medicine will always triumph in the end. So, if you think that life is bad, that life is worse, that nothing can get better, it will not be the same or it cannot be worse than what happened to this family. That's why I chose this story from one of my travels if only to show that no matter how hopeless things seem, no matter how bad things seem in uh, 2020, there's always hope in the, in the year ahead. And there's always something positive coming out of negative things in our lives. So, before I go on, please subscribe to the Blackcaster Armandin YouTube channel. And join me to the rest of uh, 2021 in my travel adventures. I'll be telling more of my stories of travel to uh, perk up history, your, perk up your knowledge about history. And also to entertain you somehow in these gloomy and dark days. So the trip I was talking about is my 2019 trip in the autumn of 2019 in St. Petersburg, Russia. So, it was the fulfillment of a childhood dream because I had one of the most memorable and thrilling visit to the to tomb and the castles of the Romanov family of Russia. Romanov are you aware of them? Have you watched the Anastasia movie? Yes. They are the family. The family of Emperor Alexandrovich Romanov or Nicholas II who was executed in July 2018 by revolutionary forces the Bolshevik revolutionaries in Russia. And that was when uh, communism was effectively born and came into formal existence as a, as a uh, system of government and as a nation. So, through history, this family has really caught the world's imagination, not only the royal watchers, but also everyone who heard, read, or watched their stories in movies. After all, how many royal families can you say could have suffered the same way as the family of Nicholas II? his wife Alex Alexandria, Alexandra and five children, the, yes, the Grand Duchess Anastasia, Alexei, 
Olga, Tatiana, and Maria. They were, they were all shot, bludgeoned, and beaten to death in a dungeon in, uh, in a forest area of uh, Russia, ending the 300 years of Romanov rule as Tsars of Russia. So 300 years all ended in a massacre of this glorious and well-known family that influenced the course of history for 300 years, including the history of World War I. And if you think that their death was tragic enough, at the Yekaterinburg region, it was not the end of their ordeal. Their, their deaths may be shocking and painful, but it took 61 years for their bodies to be recovered, for their bodies to be, to be examined. For 60, 61 years, no one knew where they had been buried because, you know, uh, the, the, the Soviet, uh, you, the Bolsheviks or the ruling uh, Soviet uh, Union gov uh, government from, from uh, 1918 were so powerful that uh, people will, will uh, take up their debt to unseat the Soviet government that they hide the whereabouts of where they have been buried. So can you imagine that for 60, 61 years? That's why all these stories came out about uh, one children, one child surviving, and that was Anastasia. And it did not help that for 61 years, many, 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 we, many women or girls came forward to the media, to the uh, foreign governments, and to Hollywood uh, make filmmakers claiming to be Anastasia or claiming to be the heir of the Romanov Empire. Because for 61 years, no one knew really what happened to them. Were they really massacred? Did they all die? Did, did, did some of the children survive? Or was the was the massacre a hoax, or did Anastasia at least uh, emigrated to the U.S. or uh, she lost her memory of uh, of what happened to her? So all of this became Hollywood uh, stories, uh, and and books were written about Anastasia, and people were hoping against hope that at least one survived from the very tragic and, and shocking incident in 1918. So all, it was only in 1979 that uh, their uh, bodies were discovered. But then their, their story did not end there or their uh, sojourn to be buried in their royal tomb did not end there. Because uh, the Soviet Union was in control, and those who found their bodies had to wait until 1988, following the collapse of the Soviet Union, and they saw a friendly government under the, Gor the Gorbachev government, and they asked for his help uh, in 1988 uh, for for for. Uh, DNA and other tests to be done on the bones of the Romanov, uh, Romanov uh, members of the Roman royalties. And uh, it was only in 1991 or 73 years after their deaths that, uh, that it was proven that they, uh, the bones really belong to the, to the Romanovs. So, for 73 years, uh, it really uh, titillated 
and really uh, made people imagine that somehow Anastasia survived. 73 long years. And uh, the, the family in their death became larger than life. Until now, you hear about them, you hear, you hear about their tragic deaths, and there are even songs including uh, about uh, a, a mystic and, and uh, charlatan and false advisor uh, in the person of, uh, of uh, self-proclaimed mystic Grigory Rasputin. Until now, people, when they have uh, people in government who are giving wrong advice to the president or to the, to the prime minister, they describe him as Rasputin because the uh, because Rasputin saw intrigues in the in the Romanov uh, government in the Romanov uh, uh, household that uh, it partly led uh, them to be disenchanted from the people and led to their downfall due to bad decisions in World War One and the hardship of the people in. Uh, in Russia as a whole. So up, up, finally, in 1991, the the bones of some, some only of the of the royal family, led by Nicholas II, was buried, interred at the Orthodox Saint Peter and Paul Cathedral, the oldest church in Petersburg. Because the family belonged to the Russian Orthodox Church, but the mis but the controversy does not end there, because the bones of uh, Maria and Alexei got separated or were were buried in another grave in the attempt by by the Bolsheviks to hide or totally erase their existence, and those were discovered only in 2007. And because the the author, Orthodox Church is still refuses to recognize them as really the, the bones of the the remaining Romanovs, they are buried or interred somewhere else, not in the uh, in the uh, Saint Peter and Paul Cathedral at the Saint Peter and Paul Fortress in the heart of uh, Saint Peter. Petersburg, and later I will have another another story on this fortress and who are the other royalties buried there. But that this is the official burial ground of the Romanov uh, dynasty. Well, one of them is the the one who, the the king who made the Tsar who made uh, Saint Petersburg, and uh, and uh, I will tell you about it later. So, it was only after 73 years that they were finally reunite, reunited with their royal family. And still, two members of the family are outside. And I, as, as I was telling you, the, the silver lining or the, rain, uh, the rainbow in the, at the end of uh, heavy and thunderous rain, is the fact that the Orthodox Church eventually declared all the families, all the members of the of the Romanov family who were murdered, they were declared as saints for the Orthodox Church. So uh, the Russian Orthodox Church considered them as saints, as martyrs for the church. So uh, and people, people are praying for them, and people are make uh, uh, Orthodox uh, followers of the Orthodox Church are are praying and uh, visiting their grave and making pilgrimages to their to their grave in Saint Petersburg. So maybe it may have been uh, a a bad death, but at at, at least they're saints. Saint Nicholas the Second, Saint Anastasia. So you, so you see, 
So, so th that's the and uh, maybe they're happy in heaven in the Orthodox uh, heaven, and there are people praying over them, and there are people that consider them not mere, not mere human beings, but saints. So, there's always hope, people. Don't lose hope. My, there's always uh, as long as we're alive. And maybe that that's uh, the one thing that uh, that we should uh, that work for in 2021 to stay alive. We should all be like uh, like uh, the Saturday Night Fever <laughs> or staying alive movie. We should all do a John Travolta. So with this uh, sad but eventually happy and uh, holy. <laughs> Saint Nicholas, yeah, right? Who who, the, who wouldn't want to be a saint, right? So, uh, Saint uh, Peter the Great did not, is not considered a saint. And he's one of the greatest uh, greatest uh, member of the Romano family. So, he, he, he strengthened the, the hold and power. And he made Russia the... the the glorious uh, brought, brought it to, to the days of glory during his time. But he's not a saint. <laughs> Only the, the, the five Romanov uh, children and, uh, and uh, 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 Alexandra and uh, her husband, Nicol Nicholas, are considered saints. So there's always hope. There's always something good coming out of something bad. So maybe COVID is like that. Maybe this pandemic is like that. So we, it's just up to us to see the silver lining. So that's why I chose this story for twin, to end uh, 2020 and to welcome 2021. So I greet you all. Happy New Year. And please don't forget to subscribe to the Blackcaster Armandin YouTube channel because uh, uh, I'll try to be, I'm normally into politics, but I'll try to to give a uh, a cheerful uh, color to my post by posting about my travel. So please uh, subscribe and please share this post if you like it and have a safe Happy Prosperous 2021, everyone. Happy New Year. Take care.